So let's finish off with the Legendre Transform and we'll look at some of the properties and clear up a few little points. We mentioned in the first video when we looked at the intuition that the forward and inverse transforms are the same. So we could write it symbolically like this. We could say with some function f of an independent variable x and it's going to transform to some function g of an independent variable s and the transform works both ways. So we've seen that the Legendre transform can be written in this form here. So we've got a g of s equals s of x of s minus f of x of s and that's the Legendre transform. But we can create the inverse transform. Now we could write it down mathematically. If we define a function say y of s which is now going to be the dg by ds, that's the g derivative. But we're not interested in the y of s, we're interested in the s of y. So this is s of y here. So finally we can write down the inverse of our Legendre transform in the form h of y is equal to y s of y minus g of s of y. But the value of our h of y, well our h of y is nothing other than our f of x, okay? So this final transform here, really we're saying this transform here is in the same format as this transform here. Now you can tend to just get lost in the mathematics here, so you don't worry about it too, too much if there's too much detail here. Uh, we're really just saying that the forward and inverse transforms are the same and we'll see that whenever we work through the example in the next page and also we'll see it whenever we look in the graphical calculator. So here's the example that we've been using throughout this little video series on the Legendre transform. We started off with our function f of x is equal to x squared and we said that we're wanting to find the gradient of this and we call the gradient a new function s of x. So s of x is just the gradient of this function, which is going to be given by 2x. But we don't want s of x. We're wanting the inverse of that because we want the gradient along the x-axis. So the inverse of this 2x is going to be the function x of s, which is s upon 2. So we've seen that in a previous video. We then write down the Legendre transform of that. And we find the Legendre transform, so we replace the x of s with the s upon 2. And again in here, the s upon 2, and we take the function f of that. So the function f of that is going to be the s upon 2 all squared, which is s squared upon 4. And whenever we do the subtraction, we get our Legendre transform s squared upon 4. So we've seen that before in the examples video. But now we're going to work backwards and show that we're going to get back to the x squared. So now rather than starting off as within the land of the, the independent variable as x, we're now in the land where the independent variable is now our s. So we're starting off with this term here, and we're going to now differentiate this term, and we'll call this new differentiated term y is it, y of s. So you can see the direct relationship between what we're doing here and this section here and the section above. So you can follow each individual line and they relate to each individual line above here. So our y of s now here is the differentiation of this. When we differentiate that but it gives us 2s. The 2 cancels with the 4 and we're just left with 1 upon 2. So that's s upon 2. But we're not interested in, in terms of s upon 2 and y of s. We're interested in the inverse of this, so the inverse of the y of s is going to be s of y, and the inverse is going to give us the value of 2y. So that's the same as what we've got above when we're doing it for our, our uh, and, and a different independent variable. So we can then rewrite the Legendre transform in terms of this here. So it's going to be our h of y equals y s of y minus g of s of y. And then again, we can put in our values here for our s of y, which is 2y, and our s of y here, which is our 2y. And it's going to be the g of s of y. So the g here is going to be 
given by the a squared, so it's going to be a 2y squared upon 4. So that's a 2y squared upon 4. It's 2y all squared upon 4. So that's going to give us our 4y squared. The 4 cancels with the 4. We're just going to be left with the y squared. So we've got 2y squared minus y squared gives us a value of y squared. So you can see that the final answer we're getting back to is the form h of y is equal to y squared. So that's really just coming back to what we have up here. Now our h of y is really just the same as our f of x. Okay, so the finally we're left with our x squared. So we can see our f of x equals x squared. So we've come from here, we've gone through the Legendre transform to get to this, and then we've gone through the Legendre transform again on this one, and we've got back to this. So you can see here that we've got a conjugate pair. So the conjugate pair are our two independent variables, our x and our s. And you can see that the Legendre transform is forward and inverse transform are just the same process. So let's look at it in the graphical calculator. You can open up the Legendre transform E. We'll put in our function, first of all, x hat 2. And we've seen this before, we've got our function in black, which is our x squared, and our Legendre transform. Now our Legendre transform is going to be s squared upon 4. Now, in order to put it in the graphical calculator, we have to put it in terms of y and x. So rather than s squared upon 4, we'll just write it down as x squared upon 4 so we can draw it. So if we were to draw this here, you'll see that the this here sits right on top of what we predict has been our Legendre transform. So you can see there, that is our Legendre transform. But now what we want to do is work back the way. So if we were to work back the way then, what we were going to do is we would take our Legendre transform, which is x squared upon 4. So we put this up here, x squared upon 4. So x hat 2 divided by 4. So now this black one here is our function that we want to Legendre transform. And you can see here that the Legendre transform is this function here. So this function really should then just be the value y is equal to x squared. y is equal to x hat 2. So when I put that on there, you can see it sits right on top of this graph here. So we can see quite simply here that the forward, if we were to do the Legendre transform twice, we'll just get back to our original function. Now the variables s and x aren't independent of one another, they are related, and we call these a conjugate pair. So we could rewrite this Legendre transform in this form here, so I've just simply taken the f of x across. So we could say our g of s plus f of x is equal to sx. Now these two terms here, s and x, they're related through x of s is dg of s by ds, and our s of x is df of x by dx. So take your time and have a think about that and look and see what we've done in the previous page whenever we did our forward and our inverse Legendre transform, which in effect were the, the same process. And you'll see we found this term here and we found this term here. So it means that we could rewrite this in two forms. We could write it in the form that we've seen whenever we derived the Legendre transform at first, which is our g of s plus f of x of s equals sx of s. And we can also write it the other way as g of s of x plus f of x equals x s of x. Now all of this is a bit of a mouthful and it's just putting it into what we've learned into a little bit more mathematical rigour. But in essence, if you've understood the graphical calculator and what's happening in the graphical calculator, then you've got a good intuitive understanding of the Legendre transform. And I think for our purposes in this course, that will probably be enough. 
Now there's one thing we haven't talked about with the Legendre transform so far, and that's the idea of convexity. Now this function here, f of x is equal to x squared, which is shown here, is something called a convex function. Now what we mean by that is that if we were to differentiate this, f of x equals x squared, then we get this function here, s of x is equal to 2x. Now this function is monotonically increasing, so it co continues up in this direction. Now we could have it monotonically decreasing as well. So the point about this is that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Now we need this one-to-one -one relationship. By that, what we mean is for each x value here, there is only one y value. Now we need that because we're going to find the inverse of this function. So we found the inverse, and this gave us our x of s. So we map it on, a, we mirror it on the line y equals x, and this gives us our inverse function, which is our s of x. Now, if this wasn't monotonically increasing or decreasing, then we wouldn't have a one-to-one -one relationship. So that would mean that we wouldn't have an inverse. So let's see this by example. So let's say we didn't have a monotonically increasing first derivative. That is, our original function is not a convex function. So let's say, for example, we used f of x is equal to x cubed. So you can see here that this function here, whenever we differentiate it, so this is the differentiated function, then you can see that the differentiated function is not monotonically increasing or decreasing. It decreases here and then it increases here. So that is, whenever we've got an x value here, it's going to give us the two points here on a curve. So if we cut across here, it goes to this point here and this point. So it's not monotonically increasing or decreasing. So this is not a convex function. So it means that whenever we find the inverse of this function, so we map it on, we mirror it in the line y equals x, so we've got to mirror this function in the line y equals x, it's going to give us this function here. So in effect, this isn't actually a function because for each x value, we've got two y values. So this doesn't have an inverse now, I'll take this off for the moment. Now, we can still find the Legendre transform, and here's the Legendre transform here, but you'll note that the Legendre transform has got two different values. So now we're left with a choice here saying, is this the Legendre transform, or is this the Legendre transform? Now, you can find the Legendre transform of non uh, of non-convex functions, but you just have to be careful about how you define that Legendre transform. So in this instance here, we could pick one or the other, but you would need to know the functions you're working with and what exactly it is you're doing and what you hope to achieve. So that gives us uh, an indication of the convexity and really, whenever we're dealing with the Legendre transforms here, we'll assume that we're working with uh, convex functions. So we've just stated that in words. The convexity ensures that the first derivative is either monotonically increasing or decreasing. So this ensures that we have got a one-to-one -one relationship so that the inverse function actually exists. Now the last thing we're going to look at is higher derivatives. We can write the function here, so this is our Legendre transform, g of s plus f of x equals s of x, s times x. Now the x and s are related via the differentiation, that is dg by ds and df by dx, so we've seen that before. 
Now, what happens whenever we find the second derivative over d or g? So that's going to be d squared g by ds squared. So that's going to give us our dx by ds on the right hand side. And the second derivative of this one is going to give us our ds by dx on the right hand side here. But you know, if we were to multiply dx by ds times ds by dx, well, that's just going to give us the value of 1. So that means that the this left-hand side here times the this left-hand side here is going to give us a value of 1. So we'll have our d squared g by ds squared times d squared f by dx squared is equal to 1. So geometrically or intuitively, what that's telling us is that the local curvature of the Legendre transform is going to be the inverse of the original function. So that's us finished with our intuitive and mathematical look at the Legendre transform. What we want to do now is actually see where the Legendre transform is going to be used in terms of our classical mechanics. Now if there's anything you want to take away from these videos on the Legendre transform, is the simple geometry of the Legendre transform. We have our function f of x is equal to x squared. We find the gradient of a point in the function. The gradient becomes the new independent variable and the height of the Legendre transform function is the y-intercept of this tangent line. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.